Now we're all talking about the current UFL, the new league comprised of the merger between the XFL and USFL, but before the 2024 United Football League, and the one some of you may remember that played from 2009 to 2012, there was the first UFL. It was a league that had a football team that made pro football history. This parking lot in Louisville, Kentucky might not look like much now, but a place called Fairground Stadium, later Cardinal Stadium, stood right here. The stadium was home to a football team called the Louisville Raiders, who played in the UFL that you might not know about, a league that kicked off back in 1961. The United Football League of the 60s was founded by George Gariff, a Columbus, Ohio attorney who, according to legendary football writer Tex Mall, was a man who never finished high school, became a carnival barker, and then at 26 years old, went to college to get his law degree. Mall profiled the UFL in its second season in this 1962 issue of Sports Illustrated. You can tell from the cover it was a very different time in America. Mall said the league that year had a budget of $84,000, with teams limiting the salaries of players to $1,650 or about $50 per game on average. One time, LA Rams coach Bob Snyder coached the Toledo Tornadoes for a salary of $1,200. That's around $12,000 these days. The first year of the league featured six teams, all located in the Midwest. The Grand Rapids Blazers, sometimes referred to as the Shamrocks, won the title that year over the Columbus Colts. Other teams in the league, the Indianapolis Warriors, the Cleveland Bulldogs, the Louisville Raiders, and the 0-10 Akron Pros, who didn't quite live up to their historic namesakes. Akron was out in 1962, but the Wheeling Ironmen from West Virginia were in, and they were the league champions over Grand Rapids. And, as I say before, it's the best thing that ever happened to this city, and I hope they're here to stay. In that 1962 season, the Columbus team was now called the Capitals instead of the Colts, and newcomer Chicago, who won just a single game, did bring with it an historic name, the Bulls. Not just known for basketball later, the Bulls, also the name of the Chicago entry in the 1926 American Football League. You can see my video on that league right here on this channel. The Toledo Tornadoes also joined the league in 1962. In 1963, the UFL contracted from eight teams back to six, with Chicago, Columbus, and Louisville out, but the league added the Syracuse Stormers. That team lost all 12 games. Wheeling won its second straight championship, this time over Toledo. The UFL was back in 1964 with eight teams in what would be its final season. Syracuse was out, the Cleveland Bulldogs became the Canton Bulldogs, a name revived from pro football history, and the newcomers, the Charleston Rockets from West Virginia, also the Joliet Explorers, who had a running back by the name of John Amos. You might know him from his post-football career as James Evans on Good Times and Cleo McDowell in Coming to America, among tons of other roles. And how about this edition in 1964? The Quebec Rifles. The Rifles were the first professional American football team to be based in Canada. They were coached by Canadian Football Hall of Famer Sam Echeverry, who was a quarterback for the CFL's Montreal Alouettes, where he earned the nickname The Rifle, and in return, his team used that nickname themselves. This AP story from September 1964 wrapped up with an optimistic prediction by UFL founder and president George Gariff, who said he believed the league would lose its minor league status around 1968 and be considered the USA's third major pro football league alongside the AFL and NFL. But alas, the 1964 championship game between the Canton Bulldogs and the Indianapolis Warriors two months later proved to be the final game of the original UFL. The Indianapolis Warriors moved to Fort Wayne in 1965 to become part of the Continental Football League. That was a league that was created by some of the owners in the UFL. The Quebec Rifles joined the Continental Football League and moved to Toronto, where they played fellow UFL refugee the Charleston Rockets in the 1965 championship. The Wheeling Ironmen also moved on to the Continental Football League. There are a few remnants of the original UFL floating around out there. You saw some of them right here in this video, including a picture of that original UFL football, which may be one of the rarest items around. One of the most prolific football collectors I know is Seth Lessons, who owns this football. He allowed me to share a picture of it here. This is literally the only clear picture of the original UFL football I could find anywhere in my research. Now, if you've seen others, or better yet, you've seen an actual original UFL football, 
let me know in the comments. And a quick shout out, of course, to Royal Retros, who hooked me up with this OG XFL Memphis Maniac shirt. If you go to royalretros.com, use the code JLS, you can get 10% off your order.